Today's video, we're doing a little countdown from number 12 down to number one. My biggest discrepancy in my rankings in terms of guys in fantasy football drafts that I am lower on than expert consensus. All right. Fantasy pros makes all the experts in the industry experts rank all their players. All right. And you get the average and then I can compare mine to theirs just like yesterday. And the reason I'm doing this is because y'all wanted to see this list. I said 500 thumbs up on yesterday's comment would get the video. Y'all showed out. Y'all showed up. How you down? All right. And similar to yesterday, we're going to try to keep all of these players within the top 100. So the biggest discrepancies I have with players pretty much within the first seven, eight, nine, ten 10 rounds of fantasy drafts. I don't think it really helps people to tell you, you know, 14th rounders that I hate. And these aren't players that I hate, to be honest with you. Again, this is a list where I was a little bit surprised of where some guys landed on it. Uh, and that will be the first player on this list. I will tell you the ranking. I will tell you the discrepancy I have with ECR. Number 12 is Devon Achan. I've moved him down a little bit because these are half PPR rankings. I have him ranked as my 43rd overall player. ECR has him at 29. So there's a 14 rank discrepancy there. I moved him down past like Isaiah Pacheco. He is firmly past Kyron Williams and some other players within that tier. Now Josh Jacobs with the, you know, Marshawn Lloyd IR news and AJ Dillon out for the season. Like I don't, I don't, I don't see a world where I'm drafting A-Chan over someone who has workhorse upside. So with A-Chan, he's not a guy, like I do want to have him on some of my teams. I don't know if I'll get him now though, because he's in home leagues, probably like a back second, early third round pick. If I have him ranked 43rd, that's a little problematic in those rankings. However, I'm okay fading him for a couple of reasons. Like what we've seen so far this preseason with the most third extension, uh, with how the preseason snaps have divvied up with the first team and with Tua on the field, Mostert is still very, very, very involved in this rotation and probably going to be a, a big goal line factor considering he was so fucking good on it last year. So A-Chan, like the upside is obvious, the explosion is obvious, and some people like to play the game where it's like, that's fine if we have down weeks where A-Chan touches the ball nine times or 11 times or whatever because those other weeks where he breaks off, you know, 35, 40 point games are worth it for you. I guess I'm just looking at the overall running back rankings. And when I look at a guy like Jacobs, who I'm not as high on talent wise, I feel like the floor is really, really solid right now. And now with all these injuries, like the upside is equally solid just because the opportunity share might be reminiscent of his breakout year or his, you know, his 2000 yard from scrimmage year back in 2022. So with, with A-Chan and Miami, like I know their scheme pretty much dictates a lot of their flaws aren't really going to be a problem. He wasn't overly involved in the passing game last year. They do add Jalen Wright, who will probably get, you know, 10 percent of the touches in that backfield. But they lose a lot of firepower on their offensive line. Their offensive line is ranked really, 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 really poorly after losing Robert Hunt and losing Connor Williams. Like they're not a good run blocking line, which, again, might not really matter because of how good they are on offense as a scheme. But I do think it's uh, a bit of a concern. So Devon HN surprisingly is a little bit lower on my list uh, relative to ECR. But if something changes, you know, I do a lot of research throughout the summer. I'm listening to a lot of podcasts. I'm, I'm I'm taking in a lot. So my rankings change pretty much daily. All right. And if you want our rankings, you can get that in our draft guide, which is available and updated live in real time all the way up until season kickoff on bdge.co. bdge.co for full price. You can get it super heavily discounted. If you go download the Underdog Fantasy app and deposit $10 or more with our code BDGE, you'll get the draft guide email to you absolutely free for that. And they've got a Travis Kelsey free pick going live next week for week one. The games are kicking off. They got pickums on there. So if you want to tail our pickums, you can follow me on the Picket app, also linked down below. But go get the draft guide via Underdog Fantasy, all right? Promo code BDGE. Devon A. Chan, maybe on the move, maybe not on the move. DeAndre Hopkins is the next guy that I have lower than ECR on this list. We have a 15-spot difference. The next three guys are actually all 15-spot differences. And again, we're working our way up this list to see the biggest discrepancy. I'm sorry I keep touching my face. I feel like there's a hair hitting right next to my eye, and it's super itchy. What the hell? DeAndre Hopkins, I have him ranked 104th overall. ECR has him at 89. This is completely and largely due to, uh, that didn't make sense to put those in, in that order. This is due to his injury that he suffered, the knee injury, the sprain. That was like a four to six week timetable. Apparently he should be ready for week one. If he's not back at practice, practicing in full, you know, at least like three, four, five practices in a row before a season kicks off, I'm going to be concerned, all right? That is kind of my rule of thumb when it when it comes to injuries at this point in the year, right? I, I kind of talked about the last three weeks, like I wasn't worried about Puka because that was like a seven to 10 day 
injury timetable return. He came back at practice this week. Okay, so you're getting like two full weeks of Puka at practice before the regular season kicks off. We're not concerned about that injury. With D-Hop, they're like, oh, maybe he's ready for week one. He's not going to practice at all leading up to it. Like That tells me that he's probably less than 100%. And if you are less than 100% and you're stepping onto the field in week one, you are much more likely to re-injure yourself, all right? So D-Hop being a 32-year-old player, that's the other thing. Like The older you get, the harder it is to return from these injuries and the longer your timetable to return is. So D-Hop played really, really well last year. I think he might be fine over the second half, but I'm not drafting a 32-year-old receiver coming into the year on the back of a four- to six-week injury in his old achy knees. It couldn't be me, and it shouldn't be you, but let the expert consensus rankings continue to push him up the boards. Next up, we've got Brock Purdy. I have him ranked 100th overall. ECR has him at 80. Five, 15 spot difference. I've talked a little bit about this. I got nothing against Brock Purdy. If he was my quarterback in a one QB league, I'd probably be fine with that. This is more akin to the fact that I have him ranked in the, in the same tier of like the Jared Goffs of the Tua's, but those guys are going a bunch of rounds lower. So I just have them together in my tier. And it's almost like the argument I'd make with Sam Laporta, who surprisingly is not on this list, uh, but Sam Laporta, like like him as a player. If he's on my team, cool. If he falls to me, like at my pick where I think it's fair value, be fine to have him on my squad. But when I look at like Laporta, Kelsey, McBride, Andrews, Kincaid, they're a tier that I see together. So give me, you know, the one that I can get latest in that tier. That's kind of the same sentiment I have with Brock Purdy. Aaron Jones is number nine on this list. Okay. 79th overall ranking for me, 64th overall for ECR. So you're talking about like the end of the fifth round, early sixth round, that is the 604, I believe. I don't have a lot of confidence in this offense being able to maintain a run game. Uh, they'll use Aaron Jones in the passing game pretty effectively, I think. But he's also someone with significant injury history. He is someone that is getting up there in age. He looked good at the end of last year. But I think the Packers environment was just so much more suitable for a running back like Aaron Jones and just so much more suitable for running backs in general than what the Minnesota Vikings team is going to be this year in that division, I should say. I I am just staying away from Aaron Jones because I, I think he'll be fine and I'll have some like explosive plays here and there and I'll have some upside weeks where he catches five to six passes. But I think on a regular basis, we're not going to have game scripts in Minnesota that really favor like running backs being huge playmakers. And I think Ty Chandler is probably going to be used more than most people are expecting. So Aaron Jones is a guy that I'm just pretty much staying away from right now. Unfortunately, Jalen Warren is also on this list. I have him ranked 105th overall, which is 18 spots lower than ECR. They have him at 87 overall. And this is completely, again, due to the hamstring injury that he sustained during their preseason game. I think it was it was either week two or week three. I think it was week two. That's a multi-week injury. Again, there are reports that like he's ready to go for week one or he thinks he's ready to go for week one. They have not committed to that at all. Players tend to just be extremely optimistic about whether or not they're playing. Don't love hamstring strains this late into August. It happened with Cooper Cup last year, and it was a fucking disaster of a year. So with Jalen Warren, he's one where I will keep a really, really close eye on practice reports. If like next week he returns to practice on Monday and their game is on Sunday and he's a full participant like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm cool with that, right? Jalen Warren will move up the rankings. However, until we see that, he's going to stay here. But again, if you want to follow the rankings in real time, see how they move, full PPR, standard, half PPR, whatever type of league you're playing in, go download the Underdog Fantasy app. Use promo code BDGE when you deposit $10 or more, and you will get that emailed to y'all. Moving down the list, we have Zamir White. I have him ranked 94th overall. ECR has him 18 spots higher at 76th overall. Zamir White, I just think, is going to be a two-down player in an offense that I have very little confidence in with the quarterback situation there. I just don't think they're going to have a lot of scoring opportunities. I think Vegas says the same. They have his rushing total pegged at four and a half rushing scores for the year, which is problematic for a dude like him who's not going to catch a ton of passes. It's fine when you do it for a dude like Alan Kamara when he's projected to score four and a half rushing touchdowns this year because we know he's going to catch 50, 60 passes. Zamir White's not catching 50, 60 passes, so that, like, Things can, I think, bottom up there. Like, you know, Alexander Madison mixes in a little bit more than we would have liked to have seen. Then Dylan Laub is the third down and two and four minute drill pass catching guy. Like in games where the game script does not go favorably for the Raiders, which will probably be relatively often, like Zamir White's going to have pretty, pretty dud type games. All right. So Zamir White, I'm off of. Another dude I was pretty surprised to see on this list was Derrick Henry. I have him down at 38th overall. And again, this is half PPR, 
22 spots lower than ECR. ECR has him at 16th overall. That is the 204 in half PPR, one QB drafts. I can't find myself pulling the trigger on that. Third round, I'm probably okay with it. I just have him ranked 38th overall. I think there are obviously the pass catching concerns. My biggest concern is the Ravens like losing all of their veteran offensive linemen this year. I think they're going to be having to recoup three starting offensive linemen, good ones too. While Lamar Jackson does mask a lot of that, I do think with Derrick Henry getting up there in age and not having as much explosion as he used to have, if there aren't as many holes and he doesn't have that like wind up speed, right? And the holes aren't there and he has to make guys miss in the backfield first or at a, at a much higher rate than he's had to do in previous years, that feels like it's going to be a little bit problematic. But I also don't want to overthink this one because this is going to be a, a relatively really good offense, you know, like they always are. And it's Lamar Jackson. Any running back behind Lamar Jackson gets a huge boost from an efficiency standpoint because linebackers have no idea what the fuck's going on. I think their play action is going to be booming. I think we look at Gus Edwards scoring 13 rushing touchdowns and leading the league in, in goal line carries last year. Obviously, Derrick Henry can step in and do that and be even better. So again, I, I he's one that I was surprised to see on this list. And he's not like a stay away guy, but at, at 16th overall, if you have to draft him there, I'm probably not pulling the trigger. I would probably prefer another running back that's available there. 16th overall, I feel like you could probably get like Jameer Gibbs or uh, or Kyron Williams or maybe like a stud receiver that drops into the, the 204 range, like a Puka Nakua. Like I would much prefer those guys over a Derrick Henry. Um, and even in games where like, I, I'd like to think they'd, they'd milk games away with Derrick Henry, but if games get away where they're up by like multiple touchdowns, they're probably not going to wear him down and make him carry the ball an extra seven, eight, nine times in the fourth quarter. So I think that's another thing to kind of keep into consideration there. Next up on this list, Ramondre Stevenson. I've got him 25 spots higher than ECR, 88. Uh, ECR has him at 63. And this one I feel really, really good about, really confident about. We talk about an uncertain quarterback situation, either Jacoby Brissett or a rookie in Drake May, an awful offensive line, like a really bad offensive line. And Antonio Gibson coming over, who's going to play a really large role in the pass catching game here in New England. Just, he's a bad runner. I know that. I, I That's that's no fucking secret or surprise to anybody that watches any sort of football. But he is explosive. And he is a very good pass catcher. They're going to use him in the screen game. They're going to use him in the two and four minute drills. Ramondre is good in that aspect of the game too, but they're going to have specific roles for a dude like Antonio Gibson. And I think that really, really caps Ramondre's ceiling in an offense that's just not projected to score a lot of touchdowns. So like, yeah, Ramondre is not a dude I'm, I'm using my six, uh, my six round pick on early six round pick. That is outrageous to me. So I feel really confident about my ranking. Next up. I feel a lot less confident about this ranking, and this is a dude that after making this video, I'll probably have to move way up, and that is Cortland Sutton. I have him ranked 131st overall. He is 99 in ECR, and a lot of this was on the back of like, okay, he scores 10 touchdowns last year. He hasn't scored more than two touchdowns in a season since 2019, so obviously huge outlier year. Like He's typically scoring two, three, four touchdowns in a season. Bo Nix has looked way better than most people anticipated this preseason, which gives me a little bit more confidence in this offense, although this offense is going to run its passing game through the running backs. Uh, obviously, they'll take some shots downfield, but Bo Nix is also projected to throw for 16 and a half touchdowns this year per underdog. So if you like the higher on that, again, go download the Underdog Fantasy app, go throw all that bonus money that they're going to put into your account for using our promo code BDGE when you deposit for the first time. Big deposit match on there. Uh, if you think Bo Nix is going to go over 16 and a half, then that's the play for you. But overall, that's what Vegas is telling us, which means there's not a lot of room for pass catchers to score touchdowns here. And I think that's like my biggest gripe. I think we'll have a lot of I, I think Cortland Sun will have a nice target share there. But I think we'll just see a lot of like five for 60 scoreless games, whereas last year it worked because he would go like four for four for 60 and score a touchdown more games than he didn't. But if his touchdowns come down, which is for sure going to happen this year, that's going to be really problematic for him as a fantasy player. So I have no doubt that he'll he'll lead the team in targets and stuff. I just don't know how valuable those targets are actually going to be. So I'm not really high on Cortland Sutton. Next dude I'm much lower on is, and this is getting to the top three players. So the biggest discrepancy in players, it's actually Jaden Daniels. I have him ranked 116th overall, 33 spots lower than ECR. He has completely just jumped the gun this preseason. They have him 83rd overall. I got no problem with Jaden Daniels. I don't have a strong prediction of how he's going to be as an NFL player. Uh, I think he had a great arm in college. I think there are way too many red flags in Washington for me to buy into him 
like we're starting to draft him as if we know he's going to hit, right? Like you're drafting him now in the area of like Joe Burrow, Jordan Love. Uh, he'll be damn near close to Kyler Murray by the time drafts end up wrapping up in a week or two. Jaden Daniels will run the ball effectively. I don't know how much you're going to use him on the goal line. My biggest problem is like one, their offensive line, bad. Their weapons now, they literally have Terry McLaurin and then nothing else behind Terry at wide receiver. So if something, it doesn't even like, I don't even need to make the argument. If if something happens to Terry McLaurin, they become a, probably the worst weapon group in the entire NFL. I have no confidence in Cliff Kingsbury running anything behind quick, quick hitting passes out to move three, four or five yards down the field. Like very little confidence in the offense, in the scheme, if Cl- in Cliff Kingsbury, in this offensive line that let up a thousand sacks last year, he might get hit more than any quarterback in the NFL. That's kind of detrimental to a rookie. Like they can lose confidence really quickly, put into a really bad situation where they don't have real weapons that they can trust, right? Like their pass catching tight end right now is like Zach Ertz. Their number two wide receiver is Deami Brown, who hasn't done anything in like the three years that he's been in the NFL. The situation, in my opinion, I get it. Like, I sure, he's a great athlete. He runs around a lot. But like if he doesn't give you 600 yards on the ground, he ain't getting there for fantasy. Why subject yourself to the Washington offense? Why subject yourself to your quarterback needing to produce in the Washington offense when the guys going around him are in the Green Bay offense or in the Cincinnati offense? Like, just choose the guys in much better offenses that you don't have to worry about all the situation going on around them. All right, so Jaden Daniels, there are way too many red flags for a rookie going into just a shitty, shitty, objectively horrible situation there. Dan Quinn, like, fuck out of here, all right? Falcons fans speaking from the heart there. Let's move up to the bottom two, and we could do this really quickly. And some of you guys that are drive-by fantasy players are going to come in like, obviously, these guys are much lower than ECR because they are on the pup list. But no, this is my moment to talk my shit, all right? I've been saying since day one of draft season, avoid Jonathan Brooks, avoid Nick Chubb. I've got Nick Chubb 155th overall, 40 spots lower than ECR, and my number one player, Jonathan Brooks, 153rd overall, 52 spots lower than ECR. We've been here all summer. So a lot of y'all were drafting these dudes. Jonathan Brooks was legitimately a seventh, eighth round pick in best ball for the majority of the summer. Nick Chubb started the summer as a ninth round pick, has since moved down to like the 11th, 12th round, still not low enough, okay? They are they are both starting the year on the pup list, which means they are missing a minimum, a minimum of four games. That doesn't mean they are back for sure week five. And it definitely doesn't fucking mean they are back 100% healthy and ready to take all the workload that they can fucking handle in week five. No, quite the fucking opposite. I would probably even put money that Nick Chubb won't even be ready by week five. It's a minimum of four games but they can continue missing games afterwards. I, I will say, I was like coin flip on, on Jonathan Brooks. I was really confident that Chubb was going to end up on the pup list. Jonathan Brooks is a little bit more surprising, but again, it's the sentiment that I've been saying all summer long. There's no need to rush him back. If they don't feel like he is completely ready, and they probably want to see what this offensive line looks like. They want to they want to let this offense gel a little bit before they throw a talented rookie into the mix. So maybe he plays the last eight games of the season. Maybe Nick Chubb plays the last eight games of the season. But right now, sure, like, now they're both going to drop significantly in your drafts. Uh, you probably have an IR spot or two on, in your league, which that's fine with. You know, if you want to take them in the 13th round, put them on the IR, I'm cool with that. I would 1,000% prefer Jonathan Brooks over Nick Chubb if all things are equal and you're getting them around the same prices in your draft. I promise you, you're going to regret taking Nick Chubb. He is a, he's been a waste of a pick. He's going to be a waste of a pick for you this season, all right? Don't find injuries in fantasy football. They're going to find you. Your team is going to get banged up this year. Why enter the year taking dudes that are already hurt? That is like the two pieces of super basic fantasy 101 advice that I could leave with you before your drafts. Don't draft injured players. If they are injured, they are fucking injured. Why actively choose to draft injured players? And why actively choose to draft players, all else equal, on bad offenses versus good offenses. It just doesn't make sense. That alone, those two pieces of advice will probably get you to the playoffs just to start with, okay? And then the rest is up to you. I'm out of here. I love you for hanging around. Make sure you go download the Underdog Fantasy app. As I said, they're hitting you with the deposit bonus. You got a free square for Travis Kelsey for week one. You'll get the draft guide emailed to you free when you use the code BDGE, $10 or more. I'll be bike tomorrow. I'll be bike every single day for the, you know, the next 10 days leading up until the season. And of course, throughout the season as well. If you enjoyed the video, hit the button that looks like this. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Smoke cheese.